Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Steve Down and this is my guitar. And um, today we're looking at Midnight Blue by Kenny Burrell. Um, thanks to Sam for suggest suggesting this one. Um, this is such a great tune and I'm a massive fan of Kenny Burrell, so I'm more than happy to transcribe and unpack any of his tunes. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the head. Um, we're going to learn the head today, um, unpack it a little bit, what chords are in it, um, what the melody line is, um, some little tips and tricks about how to play it. Um, and then we're also uh, next week going to start looking at each chorus for his solo um, and take it apart, the solo apart bit by bit, because there's so much that we can glean from this. Um, so all of the transcriptions and everything are all um, available on my Patreon channel. Um, if you want to support, if you like this video, then that's the place to go. Um, but don't feel obliged. Um, I'd love it if you could give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe just so that everyone else can see it. Um, if you found it useful, that is. Um, so let's get started with the first section of the tune. One, two, three, four, one. So the tune opens with this uh, Dorian chord movement, um, which is pretty cool. It's, it's instantly recognizable. Um, it is actually F Dorian because you've got that D natural rather than the, the D flat that's in there. So the key signature on this will be E flat major. Um, and uh, the main thing is just to get the, the groove correct on this. Um, one. It's kind of similar to Van Morrison's Moon Dance. I'm not sure whether anyone's no I mean, anyone else has noticed that or not, um, but I'm pretty sure that Van Morrison might have taken a little bit more than a small amount of inspiration from this tune. Um, but anyway, that's how it opens. It's just Kenny, bass player, drummer. The backing track that I've got has got some organ in it but there wasn't any organ in the original. I just like the sound of the organ on it. How to play this, it's a triad. So you've got F, A flat and C, and it's all in root position. And then G, G, B flat and D. And going up to A flat, C and E flat. So. On the on the backing track, just a short next on the record, it's about eight bars long. On the backing track, we do this. Um, going to a C7 sharp nine, um, and that's that for that little section. So if you want a little exercise that will help you with the with learning the the chords that are in the diatonic sequence of F Dorian, um, you could do this running up laterally up the neck. So F minor. G minor, A flat, B flat, C minor, D half diminished, and E flat. That D half diminished is a little bit tricky if you're not familiar with that chord shape. You've got D, which is the 10th fret on the 4th string, uh, F, which is the 10th um, fret on the 3rd string, and then A flat, which is the 9th fret on the 2nd string, and then up to E flat, and then back to F, F minor. So he replaces the C in the actual tune though with a C dominant, which we'll see later, um, and actually makes it altered as well. So we'll, we'll catch up a little bit on that later. But that is that's the first part. So the second part um, is the melody that he brings in. So the melody that he brings in, um, let's just take a look at that first. One, two, three, four. So that's kind of like the first half of it. Um, it's all F pentatonic, F minor pentatonic, 
Um, and he's using the blue notes in there as well. So you can add those notes in there. Um, so the melody line, uh, it comes in on the and of four. One, two, three, four. Like that, so it's like a push just before. Now the first time, I think a lot of people play this, um, get this, this, this wrong here. They tend to just go straight to the like that, but it doesn't actually do that. If you listen really closely on the record, it actually goes up to the fifth. So it goes, and it's a very clear and cool slide. And then you've got that grab there. Um, now it's really difficult to decipher on the record whether he's going and playing the, the altered chord from down here, or whether he's playing that. Um, so there's a lot to be said, you know, obviously it's different instrument, different gauge strings. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to figure out exactly where he was on the neck. It sounds to me like he's here, but I'm open to being corrected. So if anyone wants to let me know in the comments whether they think it's down here. I think that's a little bit fiddly down there. It doesn't sound quite as fluid and like Kenny plays it on the record. So, so that's where I'm gonna play it. And then the, the, uh, the second half of it, and so that's where we bring in that um, that blue note. So, and then just repeats. Instead of ending with the, the 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 C chord grab, he goes down to F. That's at least what I can hear on the record. It goes down to an F F minor. So and then we're into the next section. So let's take a look at that. One. Two, three. This next section here is uh, the B section, a two five one, a minor two five one. So the chords that you hear are so G minor seven flat five, C altered. F minor seven, and then also he goes to B flat seven. Now I can't hear a full B flat seven like that. Um, just for going from some YouTube videos and doing a little bit of research on this, some people seem to think that it was this. I can't hear that. Um, yeah, definitely can't hear that in the top. But I can hear this. Sometimes it's difficult to kind of figure out in the stereo field whether there is a bass note or not. But I think he's letting the bass player handle that low part of the, the stereo field. And, and he's just playing this um, shell voicing here. B flat, D and A flat. In case you don't know what a shell voicing is, that's um, it's just basically a chord that's got the, the, the kind of absolute essential parts to it, which is like the third and the seventh and the tonic. So in this case, the B flat, D, and A flat. So, um, and then he put, there's a melody line that goes al along with these chords as well. So. So he does this. And does a partial um, voicing of the G minor seven flat five. So he's leaving out the, the bass note. He's letting the bass player handle that. So. Is going from the 10th fret, so the C, F, and then this partial voicing, which is D flat, so 11th fret, 4th string, um, the F, which is the 10th uh, th fret, 3rd string, B flat, which is the 11th fret, 2nd string, and E flat, which is the 11th fret, 1st string. So, and then... He's again taking out the bass note. He's not playing the bass note, letting the bass player handle that. 
and he's playing the top um, notes, top chord tones from a C altered chord. So we've got, uh, with a C altered, um, you've essentially got the flat seven, which is the B flat, the third, which is the E, the sharp five or flat 13, which is there, is either A flat or G sharp. And then you've got a flat nine in the top there, which is a D flat in the top there. So sharp five, flat nine, sometimes it's written as C altered. Um, so and then, then he plays a partial again of F minor. So just a little bit of what would be that chord there. And then to that shell voicing of B flat seven. One, two, three. So the second half of this, um, your chords that you've got are B flat minor nine, A flat minor nine, and then a C altered. Okay. Um, so the melody line. That's your melody line. And he's adding the chords in underneath it. So that's that melody in the top. A flat minor nine, and then this is a rootless voicing of that C altered. So you've got the uh, the E there, the third, seventh B flat, and then you've got the um, E flat there, which, which is the uh, sharp nine or D sharp, I should say. And then the sharp five there, so so sharp five, sharp nine. Again, you might see that written as C altered. Okay. Um, so So Sam asked a little bit about uh, gear that um, Kenny used. Um, it's fa fairly simple um, what he used. Um, just from from my kind of uh, geekdom and my um, research into Kenny, um, the uh, the the guitar that he mainly used was an L5, um, but he had Charlie Christian pickups. He was a big fan of Charlie Christian, so he had Charlie Christian pickups on his L5. A um, lot bigger guitar than what I've got here, so it's got a different tone to it. Mine's like a thin line uh, Hofner on here, so it, um, there is a different tone to it. Um, and the amp that he used, it's it's kind of impossible to to track down anyone who knows definitively what it was, but it's more than likely that it was a Fender Tweed Deluxe, um, just because. Um, Rudy Van Gelder, who recorded the Midnight Blue, the 1963 album this came from, um, his, his the amp that was in the studio that was commonly known to be there was a Fender Tweed Deluxe, which happens to be my favourite amp as well. I think that's kind of why I resonate with that amp, because I really like the tone of this record. So um, I think that was probably the amp that he used. It certainly sounds like that, although he manages to make it overdrive. Um, if you listen later in the tune... You can hear a little bit of uh, a bit of crunch, and I don't know whether he would have had that amp cranked that loud that it would have crunched. Um, so it, it could be, I mean, it could be that he had it that loud. Who knows? But um, it's more often that it was just pretty, probably pretty ragged. I would have thought and pretty old by that point, and probably hadn't been serviced. And you know, I would imagine that you know everything was probably on its way out. So that might have been why it was um, breaking up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think um, L5 with Charlie Christian pickups and a Deluxe, a Fender um, Tweed Deluxe was probably his weapons of choice for this particular record. Um, so, um, like I said, this is the head. Next week we're going to be going through the first chorus of the solo and we'll take that apart um, 
and give you some ideas for your own solos. Um, if you liked this video, do give it a thumbs up. Um, give me any feedback, that would be great. And um, don't forget to subscribe if you like what I do. Um, and if you want to support, then Patreon's the place to go, which is um, www.patreon.com forward slash extra guitar lessons. Um, so have fun practicing and I'll see you uh, next week for the next part in the series.